Hi, I'm Chris Heiser from Internet2 and University of Pennsylvania, and this is a training on the admin track for the grouper installer. We're going to talk about um, an introduction to the installer, how to run it, some of the limitations, and detailed description of the prompts that you're going to see with an example. So the grouper installer is going to install the API as a quick start. Um, including the web services, the grouper client, the provisioning, the UIs, um, the grouper shell. A, uh, it'll install a database for you. You can run notifications if you have those configured. Um, the grouper loader it will run and the subject API with a JDBC source. So um, to download the grouper installer, um, you just need to go to the software download page. It requires Java SDK 6, um, not the JRE, but the SDK. It's packed in one small Java jar with no dependencies. Um, it downloads all the released versions of grouper for you, uh, unpacks them, configures them, and starts them. It will download Ant and Tomcat so that you have the right version of those. Um, but it's not going to install those centrally on your machine. Um, it's just going to be used for for the installer. It has a built-in HSQL database, or you can use your own if you have MySQL or Oracle. It'll print out the progress of what it's doing, so you can learn how to how it works. It prints out the commands, and it'll ask you for some user input. So to run the installer, you just download the jar or the tarball, copy it to the directory where you want Grouper installed. Um, that you don't have to do that, and then you run it by typing java-jar grouperinstaller.jar. Some of the limitations of the loader, um, or the installer, it can't stop the loader once it's started. You're going to have to kill that process if you want to stop it. Um, if you have ports in use and you select the installer to use those ports, then it could be confusing or cause a problem. And it's more smooth if you're running a clean install um, rather than trying to um, upgrade an existing install. So here I have the grouper installer downloaded to this directory. I can type java-jar grouperinstaller.jar. It's going to ask me where I want the install directory. I'm just going to choose this one. So it has um, brackets around the default response and you can just hit enter if that's the case. <clears throat> so I'll just hit enter, it'll go there. Default IP address, um, generally don't have to worry about that, just hit enter. So now it's downloading um, the grouper API binary from the Internet to site and it shows you the URL where it's downloading from. Now it's um, unzipping the tar gz and expanding the tar file. And now it asks if you want to use the default hsqldb database. In this case I do. If you have a MySQL or an Oracle, you can use that one. So I'll just hit enter since it defaults to true. And then it's saying that it's editing the grouper.hibernate properties file. And it says, do you want the script to start the hsql database? And yes, so I'm just going to hit enter. So now it's starting it with this command, so you know how to start it later on, and it's going to run that query to see if it was okay, and it successfully tested the database. So now do you want to initialize the database? That's going to create all the grouper tables and everything. In this case, there's no default, so you don't accidentally do it when you're not supposed to. So you have to type T and enter. So now it ran... Um, gsh dash registry dash drop dash run script dash no prompt so you know how to um, create the database tables in the future if you want to and then it's printing out that it uses the SQL file and this is where some of the um, property files are read from and now do you want to add quick start subjects so yes I do so that um, there are some subjects in the project and so it's downloading that file from this URL and then it's adding it with gsh dash registry dash run sql file that subjects file and then it ended that 
Now do you want to add quick start data to the registry? That's going to download an XML export of Grouper that has some sample folders and groups um, and members, etc. And it uses the quick start data. So now it's going to install that XML file with this command, tsh-xml import old, because it's one of the legacy XML formats, running as Grouper system, which is the root user, and running the quickstart.xml file. And no prompt means it's not going to ask me if I'm sure. Um, so it um, auto-created some stuff and ran that, and that's good. And now do we want to run the Grouper loader, which is the daemons? Um, so this defaults to no because um, we want you to be sure that you want to do that. But I yes, I do want to run the grouper loader. Um, and so all that's going to do is run gsh-loader. And now if you looked at your um, processes, you'd see a couple Java processes running now. Um, one for the installer and uh, one for the loader. and one for HSQL. So now it's going to download the user interface and expand that and unzip that and it says do you want to set the Tomcat memory limit because um, generally the defaults are too low. So it's going to edit Catalina.bat and Catalina.sh and set the new value to 256 megs for the memory and it asks which ports do you want to use. I'm going to change these around um, so it's not the default ports. And I'm just going to do 8600, 8601, 8602. And um, it's going to edit the server XML so that it listens on those ports so it tells you exactly where it's changing things. And um, should we stop Tomcat even though we don't think it's running? Um, that's just a catch because sometimes it can't really detect it. So I'm going to say no, you don't need to stop it because I know it's not running. Um, now it's going to build the UI ant dist in the um, in the UI directory. So you can run that command later on if you want. And it built the UI and that's fine. Um, do you want to configure the log directory of the UI? Yes. So um, Normally the log directory of the UI just goes to the API log directory and in this case we're going to change it so it goes to the Apache logs directory under grouper UI. Um, just hit enter. And so it changed that in the log4j dot properties for the UI and it created that directory and it tried to um, create and delete a test file just to make sure it's okay. And now the URL path is what goes at the end of HTTP colon colon lo localhost or whatever your domain is. So Grouper is fine for that. And now we need the Grouper system password. Um, so I'm just going to make it QWER. And do you want to set that in the Tomcat users? The answer is true. And um, Tomcat isn't supposed to be running and it's detected not to be running. Should we stop anyway? No. So we check to see um, if the ports uh, for Tomcat are in use now. Sure. So Tomcat is listing 9600, so we're all set. So now it asks if we want to build the web service, which it just downloaded and unzipped. And the answer is yes. So I'll just hit enter because that's the default. And um, now it's trying to stop the Tomcat that we started for the UI. Should we check to see if Tomcat was able to stop? Sure. So now it says Tomcat's not listening on 8600, so it stopped successfully. Now in the web service directory, it's running um, ant dist, so it's running the um, web service. And by the way, it edited the build.properties so that the grouper dir um, isn't dot dot slash grouper, but rather c colon temp gi um, group API binary. Um, do you want to set the log directory of web service? Yes. So we can separate the web service from the API logs also. In this case it'll go to the Tomcat logs grouper WS directory. Just hit enter. And the URL path for web service is the default is grouper-ws. That's fine. Hit enter. 
And it says it's not listening. Do you want to stop Tomcat anyway? No, because it's it's detecting it correctly. Should we check ports to see if it was able to start? Sure. So now um, Tomcat is listening on 8600 again. That's good. And the web service URL is that. Now it downloaded the grouper client. And the username and password it put in the grouper.client.properties file. And now it's trying to run a client command against the web services that we just installed um, to try to get the um, members of this group. And and uh, it did that correctly. So now your grouper client works if you go to this directory. And now we can install the provisioning service provider. And the default is true, so we'll do that. It'll download that targz and unzip it and and the PSP is downloaded and expanded um, but there's no LDAP so um, anyway this just reminds you what the URL is for the UI and the web service so if you go to a browser and you go to the URL for the um, UI. And you type in the username and password that we put in the um, Tomcat users XML. So grouper system and TWER. Then you have Grouper. You can browse some folders and um, you can look at some groups and look at some members. And so all the test users are there. These are groups of groups. And here are some sample numbers that are in this group. Click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. And that's it. Thanks a lot. For further information, visit the lists or the wiki, etc. Thank you.